are both the Rahul and Modi models of development riddled with holes? And joining me tonight to answer that question, Sanjay Jha, he's a member of the Congress Party, Shankar Ayer, well-known economist and someone who's written extensively on the truth about the kind of promises which have been made both by Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi and Jena Ran Vyas, former Gujarat Health Minister. Thanks for joining us on the show. Jena Ran Vyas, let me first begin with you. You know, it seems that Mr. Modi is a big fan of Bollywood. It seems that he's really been inspired by some of the stories which have been put out by the likes of uh, Yash Chopra, who were looked at as the ultimate dream sellers. Would I be correct in my assessment to say that Narendra Modi is the master of selling dreams, packaging dreams, putting innuendo, spin on a collection of facts and coming to a completely different conclusion? Well, I would say that jumping to the conclusion based upon the peculiar situation that the state is facing now and making it a sole example to prove this hypothesis would be an injustice to Mr. Modi. You have to accept that on several fronts, he has been successful in gov delivering a good governance. Right from the fiscal discipline, you look at the Gujarat government's fiscal discipline. This is one government which is running its um, uh, government without fiscal deficit while the center is not able to manage the fiscal deficit despite the, uh, the act being proclaimed long back in 2004. Yes. Starting from there to the electricity for the villages, to roads in Gujarat, to school uh, rooms which are built in excess of about 80,000, to filling up the vacancies of these primary school teachers, to working out on the 108 emergency health management scheme. There are several promises that have been fulfilled. Right. So just calling, a sum, uh, calling uh, uh, it a summer, just relying upon one swallow, you let, let me admit, I mean, whatever has been shown is a reality. Yes. There is no, 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 no point in running away from the reality. After 11 years, Gujarat is facing one of the worst water scarcity situations. Right. Gujarat is a water scarce state. Per capita water availability in this part of the country is less than 800 meter cube per person no, per no, year. No, no, Mr. Vyas, Mr. Vyas, Mr. Vyas, you know, let me, I'll tell you why I'm raising this question. And you're absolutely right that we should just yes. not be looking at what is happening at the moment in routed parts of Gujarat. But I'll tell you why this question is being raised, Mr. Vyas, about the promises which are often, or the figures which are often cited by our Chief Minister. Because in all platforms, Mr. Modi always talks about what is right with his policies, what is right with the state of Gujarat? He never takes it upon himself to also explain what is wrong with the state of Gujarat. Now, you've, you've listed out some facts, you've read off some well, figures. Let well, me also well, present some say, figures. Let me, ja, hold on for a second. Let I me just present say. some facts before you. you yeah. know, because, and that's why I was saying yeah. that maybe Mr. Modi is the master yeah. dream seller. Mr. Modi recently, when he came to the Fiki summit, said that he has come up with this big thing of providing soil cards to farmers only in his state. It was almost as if this was Narendra Modi brainwave. You know what? There are 48 crore, 48 crore such soil card holders in the country. Mr. Modi says that tourism in Gujarat has gone up immensely during his tenure. You know what? Look at the figures. Between 2001 to 2003, 2.5%. 2 in 2011, it was still 2.5%. The point, sir, is that Mr. Modi never allows himself to be questioned on the basis of facts, which is why I say... He puts hyperbole, he puts spin, and then wants us to believe the conclusion that he has come up with. Am I right or wrong, sir? Let, let, me, let me start with your second issue. Yes. We, we don't get the, the, uh, drawn away by these statistics because statistics are double-edged tools. Sir, but these are the statistics you know, which are read off by your chief minister. I, I, I'll, I'll you have read off those, you, those statistics. You your are, chief minister are, read off I'll, those statistics. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, are, what, are the other, what is the other side. Yes. You know, this year... For the year 2011-12, the government of India's tourism ministry has given Gujarat's tourism effort uh, based tourism friendly states uh, recognition. Yes. You go to ITB, you go to ITB, okay. which is which is held every year uh, overseas in yes. Germany. Yes. You know Gujarat has been identified this time and have been recognized as one of the most emerging tourism friendly states. Okay. Now you know you should understand 
this is for a state sir but i am again going by statistics you are saying statistics are so a double edged weapon i agree with you and therefore i say that maybe mr modi should allow himself to be questioned on the basis of statistics but that was about See, modi that is all modi I, let me I'm let me let me sure go to the other how, side i'm not uh, sure how recent uh, this statistics sir, are sir i'll come i'll come back to you i'll come back to you because i also want to put this question to sanjay jha it's not as if that this is just a peculiar problem restricted to mr modi or maybe some other politicians sanjay jha your vice presidential uh, 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 the vice president of the congress party recently spoke about what his vision of india was what his vision of development was now our reporter who traveled to amethi has come up with some rather interesting statistics sanjay and i want to put these statistics before you in sultanpur which is a part of the amethi lok sabha constituency more than 50 factories set up between 1984 and 1990 have shut down only 12 factories that were set up in that industrial area during this period still functioning 91 onwards 38 new factories have been set up and even those factories which are supposed to have been set up by congress's own admission are only on paper so therefore sanjay jha the question which is applicable for narendra modi is also applicable for rahul gandhi has rahul gandhi failed the people of amethi uh bhupender my answer to that is an emphatic no and uh, before i answer your question i need to respond to what mr vyas said uh, he talked about uh, you know the fiscal deficit in gujarat being uh, very narrow by what norm i have not really understood but he should know better that mr narendra modi goes to town uh, about the fact that he's got no debt in gujarat but gujarat is actually suffering from a staggering deficit in terms of the debt it carries day after day so that's something that is a blatant lie so statistics is not just a no, no, answer the question weapon. you answer the question that i'm posing lie as well just answer so the I'm, question i'm coming Sanjay. to that yes. i'm coming to that yes. now now let now let me tell you you know i heard the clips that you played on the video earlier yes. and by a strange coincidence i happened to be in uttar pradesh for a couple of weeks in the last one month yes. and and you know the truth of of what what your allegation is now if you look at the development of any constituency in uttar pradesh parliamentary uh, you take an assembly seat or whatever you take the problem is across uttar pradesh uttar pradesh remains even today a predominantly agrarian economy industry really hasn't been able to make any impact there's a failure of successive state governments over a considerable period of time now you are not going to be able to create a sudden oasis in the middle of this crazy desert because no, no, you know no, no, you no, can't no. have an amethi no 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 sir you know, you know I, I, I agree and multiple i agree with you because, because this is this that, is the oldest happen. argument it's Sanjay, a question of this how this is the oldest argument which has been given no, but, by but congress it is leaders it, it, we are not in par in the state so therefore we can't do anything my simple point is when you make a promise when you go and tell the people of amethi or raibareli that you are going to change their lives when you go and have meals with them why don't you also ensure that at least bring about some basic level of change no i'm not saying that you you, you may convert it into an oasis but why can't you why can't you start with more schools more hospitals better roads better healthcare facilities these are simple things certainly rahul gandhi can provide that sanjay or not No, Bhupen. I won't answer your question. Just give me a minute. I won't take too long. Yes. You see, a lot of the issues that I'm talking about. Please, please don't, please don't think that I'm trying to dodge the question or you know give you a flimsy pretext. There is no denying. In fact, Rahul Gandhi's speech at CII, and in fact, even to his party in Jaipur, manifested the honesty that I think a leader of India today needs to acknowledge. Which is what that there are challenges, and I don't think if you ask Rahul Gandhi even today, he will tell you himself that in a meeting which has several other you know kind of pockets. there are multiple challenges that need to be overcome yes. i can also tell you there are many people who are very happy with him which is why you know he is extremely popular there okay. but they all recognize that there is only so much an mp can do an mp gets a fund he tries to use that fund for you know various you know ways to develop the the, the entire township or the district that is that is there before him and then he has to use his offices to try and attract industry and you know ensure that the state government co-ops that frankly speaking hasn't happened i'm not blaming sir, anybody for it sir, but that's a true and a brutal reality sir, and let me answer the second one yes, let me that after yes, this yes. after this after this bhupendra i'll take a question yes. you see a lot of the schemes that you know you quoted somebody with a narega card who's yes. not getting an opportunity for you know the job and earning the income the you know end of day uh, for a lot of these central schemes which is on health uh, actually uh, actually mandrega is a r- remarkable example where the states need to really go and do the final last mile of delivery. 
delivery. No. Now, it's, it's for the states to really look at it, not as a Congress-sponsored scheme, which is going to benefit the Congress in the elections. But, but, you know, but how but they Sanjay, I don't buy this argument. I don't buy this argument, Mr. Jha, because, well. because this is such a schoolboyish argument to be made that, look, there is a problem with the system. You know, this is what we used to do when we were in school and college, that, oh, God, there's something wrong with the system. You know, Shankar Ayer, do you really believe that whether you're a Narendra Modi or you're a Rahul Gandhi, do you really believe that leaders like these have do they have they really achieved enough on the ground to try and appropriate this model of development that both of them are talking about well you know i am distinctly uncomfortable when people speak about individualized or individualized issues okay. uh, the issue really that we face is about institutional decay the slot that we see you, you projected two very good instances, uh, one in Gujarat and one in Uttar Pradesh. What was the issue in Gujarat? The issue in Gujarat about, was about drought, a phantom of the 18th and 19th century which continues to visit India. You spoke about joblessness, education and lack of employment opportunity in terms of manufacturing or industry in Uttar Pradesh. Both of them require a change in mindset. In India, what happens, if you look at India, it's a classic case. East of Kanpur, we wax eloquent about the problems. We have PhDs in describing the problem. But when it comes to actually doing something, you have a litany of excuses. Now, is it the case of the Congress party that if a particular party is in power in the state, they have no role as an opposition party, right. that they have no role as the party governing in the center. The point in Gujarat is similar. Right. Water management is an institutional issue. We have in this country an idea for interlinking rivers, for doing projects for the last 20 years. It's been on some uh, slow burner or freezer. And nobody wants to work at this. So if you expect in India that an individual can come and fix things, right. he might be able to provide the mindset. Now what is the difference between Rahul Gandhi and Modi here? Modi brings to the table a mindset where he says that I am willing to look at solutions right. and I am want to do solutions and then he has some track record for that. Yeah. Yes. What is Rahul Gandhi? What is he bringing to the table? He says that the mindset Again, he spoke about institutional change. Yes. The point that the politicians must answer is seven decades later, we are still discussing the problem. <laughs> that's a good, Who's that's going a good to point. fix the solution? That's a very good point that you make, Shankar. That's a very good point. But I, I, I wonder whether really anyone will have a solution to that question or not. But gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. I'm afraid I've run out of time on that debate. But that's a very valid point which is raised there by Shankar Ayer. That at the end of the day, all of us are experts in trying to figure out what the problem is. And everyone is also a master now the art of finding some justification, some excuse to say that, look, we cannot do anything beyond what we have already promised or already offered. Hopefully, at some stage, there will be a change in mindset, a change in institutional mechanisms as well.